Grandma, it's cold. Please let me in. In the deep of a midwinter night, I was surprised by my granddaughter's sudden visit. Dad and Mom said they don't need a daughter who failed her high school entrance exams. Clad in her tattered uniform and with tears filling her eyes, she threw herself into my arms. Those people. I'll never forgive them. I'll deal with them myself. Normally gentle and quiet, my husband clenched his fists. His face contorted with anger as if he were a demon. And then, he handed me a piece of paper he had written something on. We have to put on the performance of a lifetime now. I answered with a wink to my husband. My name is Evelyn. I am a 65-year-old housewife, living a modest life as an early elderly pensioner. Having worked as a clerical worker at a transport company for over 40 years, I found myself bewildered by what to do with my newfound free time. My husband, five years my senior, and I married through work. Our relationship started from being a driver and a clerical worker. And we got together with the blessings of our colleagues. I was naive and always pleasant. I was flattered by the attention from the drivers, calling me a Madonna. And my colleagues were worried I would never refuse anyone's invitation. Just then, I encountered a dangerous situation, and my husband saved me. Standing tall at 5 feet 9 with a sturdy build, he threw the man aside. Yelling, I'll deal with this, and barked, stop smiling at every man indiscriminately. I will protect you. It was an overly dramatic line. But I fell for the manliness of my usually quiet and reserved husband, and I accepted his proposal. Forty years have passed since. My husband, who retired at the same time as I did, remains quiet and not very entertaining. But his expression brightens up when watching reruns of period Western TV shows. I love his subtle smile. It seems to be a warm spring day today. Shall we go see Sophia's face? One spring morning. Looking at the weather forecast in the newspaper, my husband suddenly suggested. Sophia is our eldest son's daughter, our precious first granddaughter. Unfortunately, we can't see Sophia until we get the okay, from my son and his wife. Perhaps my husband had forgotten that Sophia was taking exams this year. I sighed and wiped my hands on my apron as I replied. It's only a 30-minute drive to see her, and I wish we could see our granddaughter more often. We used to visit as a family of three at least once a month until Sophia was in elementary school. And dining out with our son's family of five was our joy. My son Chris, his wife Tracy, and Sophia would all wave goodbye with a smile, saying, we'll come again. However, once she started elementary school, Busy with cram school and club activities, she rarely showed her face. I regretted not living together, but it was too late. Our son, putting work first, built a house near his wife's parents' house. Right after retiring, I called Tracy's mobile, wanting to see Sophia. Mother, aren't you being a bit selfish? Just because you've retired and have free time, you want us to come over. You prioritized your work when we needed you the most, didn't you? Plus, Sophia is taking her high school exams this year. She doesn't have time to play. Please don't call us anymore. I was speechless. And to my apology, Tracy retorted. Sophia is aiming for a super prestigious elite school. She's excellent. We absolutely need her to pass. I see. But I think putting too much pressure on her might not be good. Education isn't everything, you know. To my hard-fought words, Tracy bluntly replied. What are you even saying? You and your husband didn't have an education. So you had to work hard all your life, right? I don't want Sophia to go through that. I want her to go to an elite high school, graduate from an elite university and marry into an elite family. Does Chris think the same? I asked, worried about my granddaughter's future and what my son thought. 
I didn't think he would force that on their daughter because of his parents' lack of education. My husband shares the same view. Let me be clear. He regrets being born to parents who lost in the parental lottery, feeling like a loser in life. What? So, please don't contact us until Sophia's exam results are out. Abruptly hanging up, I was left in despair. Although busy, I felt guilty for not being able to take my son out more often when he was a child. But being told off like that made me feel sorry for my hardworking husband and I kept the quarrel with my daughter-in-law a secret until today. It's about time we heard something. Sophia took the exam at a private high school, right? The exams are over. There should have been an announcement by now. Hearing my husband's murmurs while reading the newspaper. I had a bad feeling about the lack of contact. The incident happened that night. Despite the warm daytime, the night was bitterly cold waking up to go to the bathroom. I heard someone knocking on the front door as I walked down the cold corridor in my gown. Huh? Is someone there? Grandma, it's Sophia. I'm cold. Please open the door. So, Sophia? Is that you, Sophia? At such an unexpected time. I was shocked and opened the door barefoot. Sophia. What happened? Honey. I called my husband with a voice louder than I expected and hugged Sophia. What happened? You're so cold. Where's your father? Your mother? Bombarding her with questions, Sophia was too shaken to answer. I quickly took off my gown, wrapped it around Sophia, and lifted her into the house. Sophia, isn't it? Hey, what happened? Quickly, bring her in front of the fireplace. Alarmed by my frantic call, my husband came to the entrance immediately. Quick. Take her to the fireplace, quickly. Sophia's limbs wouldn't stop trembling, cold to the touch, her face and lips blue. The chattering of her teeth indicating the severity of the situation. I, I was told I'm not needed. Sophia managed to squeeze out the words. What do you mean? Dad and mom said, they don't need me, so I left home. Never mind that for now, warm up by the stove first. I'll make you some hot honey ginger milk, just wait. Dear, please turn on the lights quickly. Trying her best to explain her situation was Sophia. I turned on the light and was stunned by her appearance. She was in shambles. Perhaps it was her school uniform. A white blouse and a navy blue pleated skirt. Over it, she only had a gray hoodie. I fell on the way here. It hurts. When I moved Sophia's hand, I saw her tights were torn at the knee. You're hurt. Honey, could you get the first aid kit, please? Do you have any other injuries? Hearing Sophia's injuries, I was shaken but my husband's voice telling me to calm down reached my ears. Being a truck driver who had witnessed numerous accidents, he was more composed in emergencies. Once you've calmed down, tell us everything that happened. The husband gently urged Sophia to drink the hot milk. As her body warmed up and she looked at our faces, feeling reassured, she began to explain her situation in bits and pieces, crying. I failed my high school entrance exams. I didn't pass. I failed. Dad was disappointed, and Mom was furious. They said I'm not their child anymore, that they don't need me. What? I don't think they meant that seriously. Soothing her crying back, Sophia started to sob. Dad and Mom said they don't need me because I failed to get into the elite high school. The thought that my son and his wife, rather than comforting Sophia, struggling with the pressure and disappointment of failing, told her to leave was monstrous. Furious at the parents' cruel treatment, my body trembled with anger. Looking at my husband, his forehead vein popped, frowning deeply, his fists trembling. This is ridiculous. 
My heart sank at my husband's shout. Resembling the fury he had when he threw a driver harassing me 40 years ago. Grandpa isn't angry at you, Sophia. Are you hungry? You should take a bath now. It's best to warm up and sleep well tonight. Right, let's do that. Sophia, having cried and calmed down, nodded and finally smiled. I intended to call my son immediately to come and pick her up, but my husband stopped me. I'll never forgive them. If we send Sophia back now, they might say the same thing. I have a good idea. I was startled by the smile of my usually quiet and humorless husband. His eyes were too sharp and frightening. What are you planning to do? If he went as far as laying hands on my son, let alone Tracy, it would be terrible. Known to be frightening when angry, I wanted to scold my son too. Thinking of Sophia's tears, but it was crucial to make them apologize first. I'm glad you came to us. To walk all this way. Sophia, you're dear to us. His eyes, sharp until a moment ago, softened with love for his granddaughter. I felt relieved by my rational husband. I want to discuss something with you. I'm thinking of letting Sophia stay with us. Huh? I was taken aback by the unexpected suggestion and looked at my husband. She's our precious granddaughter. The time we couldn't see her must have intensified our love for her. I understood the sentiment but shook my head, thinking it was impractical. I understand how you feel, but that's unreasonable. She still has school, and her parents are just upset because things didn't go as expected. If we contact them tomorrow, they'll come to pick her up immediately. No, nothing would be better than that, I think, though it's just in case. However, though, it's infuriating. It's frustrating to just send Sophia back easily. We have to teach them a lesson. Justice, justice. My husband, a fan of cowboy TV shows, said this and then asked me to prepare paper and pencil, scribbling something to show me. What do you think of this script I wrote? Yes, I think it's good. Our precious granddaughter was treated so horribly. A little payback won't hurt. Let's teach them a proper lesson. I, usually pragmatic, thought there were good lies and bad lies in the world. I wanted to teach my son and his wife a lesson with a bad lie. I guess we have to put on the performance of a lifetime. I answered with a wink. The next morning. After checking that Sophia was sound asleep, I called Tracy. Hello, it's me. Oh, Evelyn, do you need something? Excuse me? I was shocked that Tracy answered so calmly. Knowing her precious daughter had been missing since the night before. If there's nothing, I'm going to hang up. I have a headache from a hangover. What? I was speechless poked by my husband beside me. I took a deep breath and read the lines my husband wrote late at night. Where are you now? At home, why? It's not just a why. Sophia is in trouble. We just got a call from the police. I think my acting was very convincing, but Tracy, far from being shaken, clicked her tongue lightly and said, Sophia, Oh, she ran off somewhere after failing to get into high school. She's been taken in by the police, hasn't she? Why would they contact you, though? Well, whatever. I have a headache. Could you go pick her up and bring her here? How am I supposed to bring her there? By car, obviously. Tracy, please listen calmly. A car is out of the question. Of course, so are taxis, buses, and trains. She's gone to heaven. The only vehicle for her now would be a hearse. What? Living for 65 years, I felt my blood boil for the first time. I was furious because Tracy, hung over, mentioned that my son Chris hadn't come home last night either. After finishing the conversation with Tracy, my hands were trembling as I dialed my son. 
Now, it was time to deliver the script written for him. Chris, where are you right now? What's with the call so early in the morning? I'm at work, at work. I just got a call from Tracy. Sophia is in trouble. She said she couldn't reach you, so she contacted me. What kind of trouble? I heard she left home because she was upset about failing her exams. Don't tell me she's at your place. Sorry to bother you, but could you bring her home? That's impossible. It seems only the parents can do the identification. You need to come. Sophia is, Sophia is inside a hearse. What? Stop arguing and come over quickly. We played the performance of our lives. It was a line I hoped never to use again, but it was necessary to discipline them. This was the first step in what my husband called justice. The script my husband prepared had different reactions for Tracy and Chris. And I was impressed by his analytical skills and insight. Both were silenced by shock at my performance. It was their punishment for spending a night without worrying about their daughter's whereabouts. They should suffer until they arrive here. Imagine the pain Sophia must have felt walking all the way to our house. They should feel that pain, no, even greater sorrow. After I finished calling my son and daughter-in-law, Sophia woke up saying she was hungry. Pancakes. Bacon, scrambled eggs and baked potatoes. I served Sophia her favorite dishes, and she ate a lot with the same smile she had as a child. An hour and a half later. Tracy arrived by taxi first, followed by Chris a few minutes later. You're her mother, and you didn't even look for your daughter. What have you been doing since then? And where were you all night? You were probably with that woman again. I was fed up with hearing their argument from the entrance. You two are causing a disturbance. Come inside now. My usually quiet husband's shout made Chris and Tracy shrink back as they bickered their way into the room. Why am I the only one being blamed? You've always left the parenting to me while lying about working and seeing other women. What, as if that's relevant right now? It is relevant. You're such a deadbeat, always cheating. So I wanted to make sure Sophia wouldn't have to marry someone like that. Which is why I wanted her to go to a good high school. What, as if you didn't choose this deadbeat yourself? Yes, I was stupid to choose you. I regret it. Their scuffle didn't stop even inside the room. I was both dismayed and disappointed in my own child and his spouse. Enough from both of you. My husband, fed up, shouted as he entered the room. Shifting blame is disgraceful. Aren't you concerned about Sophia's well-being at all? Faced with my husband's wrathful demeanor, Chris and Tracy looked at each other. Where is Sophia now? Their synchronized response in such a chaotic moment made me laugh dryly. Don't you care about Sophia? Isn't she more important to you than your own lives? Well, that's. Their synchronized response again filled the room with tension. When I thought she was gone. I felt relieved, like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. We've been considering divorce for a while, but Sophia was in the way. Neither of us wanted custody or to pay child support. Shocked by their unbelievable statements, both my husband and I were at a loss for words. A child who failed to get into an elite high school is an embarrassment. I didn't want her anyway, so this worked out. I don't want her either. And let's split Sophia's life insurance money. How could they be so heartless? This was the second time in my life I felt utterly disgusted. I was glad I had asked Sophia to run an errand to the store earlier. She shouldn't have to hear such a conversation. I didn't raise you to be like this. Eh, what? Ah. As I approached to hit my son on the head, I screamed in horror at the unexpected turn of events. Are you even fit to be Sophia's parent? You bastard. Despite usually being quiet, 
My husband raised his voice and slapped my son on the cheek. What are you doing? I'm going to straighten out your attitude. With that, my husband struck again. Eek! My husband, who had never raised his hand before, put all his strength into knocking my son down. Chris, holding his cheek and tearful, looked pitiful. Tracy started trembling next to me. Frozen by the sight of her usually quiet and gentle father-in-law taking action. Justice served. After delivering three hits to my son and a lighter one to Tracy, my husband smirked and muttered. He must have been waiting to say that line. I'm back. Grandma, I bought pudding and cake. I'll put them in the fridge. Oh, and I took you up on your offer and got some underwear too. Huh? What are mom and dad doing? At that moment, Sophia, returning from the convenience store, found her parents and was surprised. Eek. My son and daughter-in-law screamed as if they had seen a ghost. After all, they thought their daughter was no longer of this world. So their reaction was understandable. Sophia, you're alive. It was my turn to silence my ashen-faced son and daughter-in-law. Mom and dad came because they were worried about you, Sophia. Isn't that nice? Despite their horrendous behavior, I offered them a sliver of hope with my words. Hmm. I see. But I won't be going back home. Sophia remained calm. What? I'm going to live in this house. What? After I graduate from middle school, I want to attend high school from grandpa's house. The high school I really want to go to is closer to here. I see. That might be a good idea. Surprised by Sophia's sudden decision, of course, my husband and I welcomed it. Sophia, what are you saying all by yourself? That's right. You're still a minor. We won't allow it. My son and daughter-in-law quickly switched tactics, trying to persuade their daughter. But you both said you didn't need me, right? I was abandoned. Don't say it's up to you. Who do you think raised you to this point? My son became emotional and raised his hand to his daughter. The situation escalated quickly. In an instant, all I could do was hug Sophia, who started crying. While I saw the flames of fury in my husband's eyes. Don't mess around, justice served. For the second time that day, my husband delivered his catchphrase. Grabbing my son by the collar and throwing him to the ground. We're no longer parent and child. I'm cutting ties with you, so get out. After scolding my son and daughter-in-law, my husband tenderly said to Sophia. Don't worry. I will protect Sophia. Seeing my husband's manliness for the first time in 40 years, I fell for him all over again. You wouldn't say that, would you, Evelyn? After all, you've always wanted to see us, right? Tracy, witnessing my husband's declaration of disownment, desperately sought my support. Sorry? I stand by my husband. But if we're disowned, what about Sophia's education expenses? You got a significant retirement payout, right? What? I'm appalled. It seemed my son and daughter-in-law were counting on our retirement savings. I don't mind spending money for my granddaughter, but not for your vanity. I firmly stated my position, and Tracy slumped to the ground, defeated. In the aftermath, my son and daughter-in-law, whose true colors and misdeeds were revealed, fought constantly and eventually divorced. My son, far from repenting, moved in with his affair partner but was kicked out due to the backlash from Tracy's family. Tracy, likely overwhelmed by stress, turned to alcohol during the day and developed a dependency. It was heartbreaking to have such parents, but Sophia excelled, got accepted into her first choice high school, and soon would be living with us. Shall we go buy a bed and a desk and curtains for Sophia's room today? My husband eagerly suggests shopping daily, looking forward to life with our granddaughter.
Your simple cuisine is delicious, but we should also make various dishes for Sophia. I'll help too. Let's buy some cookbooks. My husband, who had never cooked before, added this to our shopping list. As a couple unsure how to spend our retirement. The prospect of blooming anew filled us with excitement. Three years later. Sophia graduated high school with honors and was accepted into the medical school of a university in Boston. After I graduate from university, I will definitely come back here. Just think about your happiness, Sophia. Take care of yourself. I held my granddaughter's hand, who was determined to work as a doctor in our town. No matter what, grandpa is on your side, Sophia. My husband, beaming with pride, supported our granddaughter's dreams, clearly adoring her. Looking at the sunflowers, I pondered our new beginning.